Hi, Navigating Motherhood friends. Thank you so much for joining our Navigating Motherhood video this week. If you don't know me, my name is Stephanie Schwartz. I'm the Director of Women's Ministry here at Compass Bible Church, and I have two very special friends here with me today, uh, Sharon Canavo and Stacy Peterson. And we're here to talk about the topic of teaching your kids self-control. So before we do that, let's find out a little bit about Sharon and Stacy. Uh, Sharon, can you tell me a little bit about yourself sure. and your relationship to navigating motherhood as well? Absolutely. Um, I am married to my husband, Mario, um, and it'll be 34 years this month. Wow. On the Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. And uh, we have three precious kids. I call them kids, but they're all full grown. Um, and Tori is now married to Bianca, my precious daughter-in-law. And um, Michael is married to Janae, who is darling, my second daughter-in-law. And uh, Natalie, my daughter, is married to Jake and living up in Spokane, Washington. And uh, I just love all three and am enjoying these adult years with them. Oh, that's so, exciting. Yeah. So you've gone from three to six very quickly. Yes, so fun. Yes. Yeah, it's fun to see the family expand. Yes. Yeah. And then my role here with Navigating Motherhood is um, I am the Friday navigating motherhood director and I've been here for about six years in the in some capacity at yes. navigating motherhood. Yeah. Well thank you for everything that you do for us. We appreciate it. I and what agree. about you, Stacy? Yes, I'm Stacy Peterson and my husband is Greg. We have three kids together also, but in a slightly different season of life. Yeah. Our kids are Tinsley, who just turned six this week. Mm. JC is four and a half. And then we have Asher, who's three and a quarter. So uh, lots of activity going on in our home these lots days. Lots of fun. Yes. Um, and I get to serve behind the scenes with Navigating Motherhood. I uh, have done counseling with gals one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so... I, I haven't gotten to meet everybody, but we, uh, we do get to connect, and it's such an honor to be a part of this ministry. Yeah, and one really neat thing about my two friends is they're both uh, here as biblical counselors. They're biblical counselors here at Compass. They do an outstanding job uh, helping us women to just direct our lives in a way that's more consistent with what the scripture teaches to make better choices. So if you need biblical counseling, feel free to request Stacy or Sharon, not like they're too busy or anything, <laughs> <laughs> but they do an excellent job. And they're uh, also women who do an excellent job teaching kids self-control. Mm -hmm. So I'm super happy to have them here to discuss this topic with us. Uh, you know, speaking of the topic, there is a verse in the Bible that very interestingly addresses self-control. And it's found in the book of Proverbs, uh, this ancient book of wisdom that has stood the test of time. Proverbs 16.32 is the verse that I'm thinking about. And it says, whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. And I love the way that that's described there, that slow to anger or ruling your spirit, that need for self-control, to be able to control your spirit, your emotions, your feelings, uh, your explosions, whatever it is. And then the, the verse says that someone who does this, someone who is able to rule his spirit or her spirit, someone who exercises self-control is better than the mighty, better than an ancient warrior who would take an entire city and be heralded by the community as this great victor. Uh, the wisdom here is saying from Solomon that one who exercises self-control is even more mighty than that victor. So you think again of this just great military hero, even looking at movies that we've seen about military heroes and people who have had great conquest over, you know, evil and bad people. And this passage is saying that the one who can exercise self-control, who can do it herself and teach her kids to do it as well, uh, has benefited greatly from that. And it also implies that without this self-control, uh, mastery of the other areas in our life, it's just 
not possible. I mean, we need self-control. Self-control leads to a successful life. And it's so important that we teach our kids self-control. So let me begin by asking my friends, uh, Sharon and Stacy, what they've seen practically as some of the benefits of teaching kids self-control. So Sharon, let me begin with you. What would you say there? Well, it's interesting because I, um, you know, I think about self-control from the point of view that I had when I was raising my kids, and it was an effort that I made to teach them to say no to themselves Mm -hmm. when it was beneficial to say no and say yes to themselves when it was beneficial to say yes. Mm -hmm. And so with that focus and training as they grew up, I watched them become more and more responsible. Mm. And um, especially, you know, in the teenage years, yes. when I hear people all the time say, how do you let them get in a car and drive away from your home? Mm. And I didn't have a problem with that because we had worked on the self-control so much in the early years that I trusted my kids to be able to say no when they needed to say no and say yes when they needed to say yes. Mm. So they were very responsible, um, both morally and socially you know, which is important. They knew morally where their guidelines were. And then also, I think what was so beneficial was they became better learners. Mm. So in school and um, in sports, in all of the areas that they needed training, um, because they were self-controlled, the teachers, the coaches, they worked with them better because they listened and Um, So there were great benefits in that. It was amazing. And then also I think they became more Mm self-sufficient earlier, which was great. Yeah. You know, the monkey off my back and onto their back. You know, I wasn't having to run around and um, constantly manage their day. They were able to do that themselves. Yeah. I even loved the football jerseys that came home that stunk so bad. And I never had to wash one of them. They did it. (laughs) Wow, that's fantastic. there were benefits. Yes. Yeah, that's funny that you say that because... Earlier, we were talking to Stacy, whose daughter Tinsley just celebrated her sixth birthday yesterday. And Sharon and I were saying, you know, about how fun it is. And Stacy saying what a great time she's having with her daughter. And we were mentioning that, you know, when we go into junior high and high school, it doesn't have to be a drag. Yeah. I mean, we really had a great time with our kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as Sharon's mentioning, so much of that ties back to them learning and becoming self-controlled. Very true. So, uh, Stacey, what would you say are some of the benefits that you've seen from teaching your kids self-control? I just am super encouraged by hearing what you guys are saying from the low, right? My kids are young, so I'm hearing that, and it's like, yes, okay, I can keep at this, you know? But, I mean, I'm just thinking of practical everyday scenarios for me. I'm productive in my home, right? Like, I can go make my meals and as I'm teaching my kids to control themselves and, and diligent in that, they are being productive doing what I've set them on task to do. And then I get to be productive to manage the home the way I'm supposed to. Yeah. Um, I can run errands, you know? Yeah. I mean, they can, they're not melting down if I'm diligent to teach them self-control. And, and, uh, and we have a happier home yeah. when we're under control, right? Yeah. And when everybody's under control, um, working to control ourselves in that way. So, it's, I mean, those are just the daily grind aspects to it. Um, but, but it's, I think it parlays into knowing that if I'm going to be diligent to teach my kids self-control, I am walking in a way that actually is pleasing to the Lord who has entrusted me with this and empowered me through scripture to, yeah. to teach my kids self-control. And that that is amazing to know that I can be living in a way that is for the Lord instead of against him. That's a huge benefit for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, super encouraging. Well, let me flip that on you and ask you, uh, what have you seen or experienced or what would you say about the consequences of failing to teach self-control. I know uh, you reminded us how important it is that when we teach self-control, we can have a harmonious, happy, orderly, productive home. And that's so true. So true. Uh, So what happens if we fail in this area? Oh, man. I mean, okay. So I, I 
when I was pursuing my training with biblical certification um, or counseling in the biblical, uh, cert- being certified in yes. biblical yeah. counseling. Okay, yes. I can say that. Um, I remember one of my mentors saying to me, just add 10 years, Stace. Mm. Just think of your kids 10 years from now. Just And, and that's just a, a phrase I am haunted with in a great way, uh, but every time I, I am tempted to just, ah, oh, I don't want to get up or I don't want to deal with this, I, I hear him say, just add 10 years. And I picture my three-year-old son as a 13-year-old boy mm. and I draw that out. And, and I, I, you know, I mean, I've got um, people in my life who are facing their kids who are depressed, anxious. They themselves are depressed and anxious and, and maybe even are showing up for counseling because of that. People who are tempted to kill themselves because their anguish is so deep. I mean, yeah. you can draw it out in so many ways. You think of, um, I remember when Greg and I were getting uh, counsel for premarital, it was, uh, we had one of the pastors counseling us through that. And and he was talking to us about controlling ourselves uh, with purity. And during that time before leading up to us getting married, it's, it, it, if we can't control ourselves in this context, why, when all the pressures are mounting in a marriage, could we expect our, our spouse to be faithful mm. under those pressures and wow. control themselves under those circumstances. Yeah. And so, so you just draw it out, even financially, school, I mean, holding jobs down, there's, there's so many ramifications. And, and I know those consequences are, are from the Lord to help steer us in a path to obey him and, right. and honor him and raise our kids in a way that are going to teach them to do the same. Yeah. So there's, there's the carrot and the stick in yes. this that God has given us. Yes. You know? yeah. yeah. What do you mean by the carrot and the stick? So the, the horse is doing their race around the, I don't even, the, the track? Yeah, mm-hmm. the track. It's mm-hmm. a track. Um, and, and there's, they will dangle a carrot before the horses to kind of lure them to keep going around the track. And, uh, and then the, the rider, the jockey's got a stick that he's also cracking on, on the horse to, to get him going. And so there are negative consequences in our, our choices and there are positive consequences mm. as well. And, and point. we see both when we, um, when we make our choices. Mm. So yeah, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. It's so true. I mean, self-control really is the foundation yeah. of, you know, so many things that emerge later in life for ourselves yeah. and for our kids as well. Um, Sharon, what about you? Uh, what have you seen to be some of the consequences of failing to teach or to learn self-control? It's heartbreaking. Um, you know, I've been involved with families and parenting for many, many years. Um, I ran a school for 20 years yeah. and... Um, it was very interesting to see the difference between families who worked on the areas of self-control with their kids versus the ones that couldn't bring themselves to do it. I think they they weren't buying into it, not mm-hmm. understanding the value of it. Yeah. And in two of those circumstances, and there are many, um, many with negative um, results, yeah. which is so sad. Yeah. Um, two of them in particular ended in death. Wow. Um, one was suicide and one was just a life of being out of control so much for so long that the person's body finally gave out on them. Wow. Um, and it it's breaks tragic. my yeah. heart yeah. because something was offered Yeah. and for whatever reason, it it wasn't being practiced. Right. And that was the result. And I'm right. not saying that happens in every right. case, right? Absolutely. Um, it's it's the exception. Right. But, but still, yeah. So serious. It's and, so it's a strong warning to us. And there's that barometer or the kind of the number line of where you fall in that. So if we're not teaching our kids self control, you're gonna fall somewhere right. on that negative part of the number line. Right. And yeah. that's what's I yeah. think just so tragic. When yeah. you have the ability, you can, but you don't buy into it. Right. And yeah, and I could probably say from experience that I think some of the reason we don't want to is because it's hard. It is hard. It's just hard. Yeah. And I think that you would both agree that if we're gonna teach our kids self control, we gotta begin with ourselves. 
Yes. <laughs> and it's hard. It's a good thing. I mean, self-control is not easy. I value people who exercise great self-control. They're sometimes my heroes, you know, the yes. heroes of stage and screen. But, you know, you sit there and, you know, stare at the walls or sit on the couch and it's like, okay, you know, self-control is a good thing. Yeah. But it's hard. <laughs> um, why would you say, Stacy, that it is imperative that we start exercising self-control ourselves if we're going to try to teach it to our kids. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I just have this very strong um, memory of when I was potty training my son, Asher, who's three now. Um, but when I was potty training him, uh, he'd, you know, he was, he he took a little bit longer to kind of hit the stride than my daughters did, <laughs> and so to speak. Um, <laughs> and also, he's the youngest, so I was distracted more, so wasn't diligent to watch his cues and that right. sort of thing. So uh, you know, we're scrambling to get out of the house one time, and um, and you know, one of my girls comes, mom. The, the ground's wet and I'm like <laughs> what spill has happened what in the world you know and yeah and I go over to where the the toys are and and he's all wet from he oh, peed himself right, right? and right. not himself only but the floor and not just the floor but all of the foam letters that come out oh of, my I mean, goodness it hideous. just absorb it yes. right? <laughs> and so I just, I mean, you feel, you guys know this yes. feeling. It, yes. You just, you feel the anger oh, mount. Yes. And yes. I just did yeah. not choose to control myself. Yeah. I ranted and, yeah. and I, this is disgusting and <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. We're late and, you yeah. know, and just storming basically. Right. And, um, and here's this scene of my, at the time, you know, two, three and four year olds just watching me <laughs> right. like, right. okay. And yeah. my daughters. Yeah. Thankfully, I, I mean, I, I it is it was an exception to my my general rule of teaching them, you know, to control themselves yes. and for me to control yes. myself. Yes. But but one of my daughters came to me and she said, "Mommy, I think we're supposed to have a happy heart." <laughs> and I that melted me, yeah. and it was like this yeah. built-in accountability yeah. and and grace that God had given me yeah, in amen. that moment. Yeah. Um, so there was there is fruit from having taught it already yep, faithfully, yeah. right? Yep. He's bringing it back and showing me this mirror through my daughter who is so gentle in her approach and yeah. brave enough to yes. approach me who's yeah. kind of, ah, you know, and, yeah. and, uh, and it, it snapped me out of it. But the ripple effect, I mean, it, yes. it didn't end there, right? Yeah. They've seen me and I've got one who just... She's a lot like me, you know, right. and so she, you right. know, that plays out, right. and yeah, totally. um, and it's it's devastating. So yeah. it's it is imperative that yes. we control yeah. ourselves. Yeah. And I yes eat crow a lot right. over that, right. you know. I mean, yeah. Well, we'll come back to yes. that in a second yeah. because I think that's important that we talk about you know how we respond after yeah. we failed in yes. that area. Yeah. So thanks for being so transparent <laughs> with us. I mean, I've never felt that anger boil up the way you're. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me. Yeah. Yes, it's something that we all need to work on. Yeah. Uh, Sharon, what would you add to that about well, why it's so important to exercise self control ourselves? Yeah, I mean, Stacy, I so relate to that. There were times when I felt like I was having an out of body experience, mm -hmm. thinking, stop, Sharon, stop, you know? And, um, you know, we just have those moments. And, um, I mean, we, we can't teach it unless we're practicing it. It's as yeah. easy as that. And as you already implied, so much is caught yeah. than taught, right? And um, what do you mean by that? I mean that our kids are watching us 24-7. Mm -hmm. And seriously, yeah. I, to me now with adult kids and seeing how much of what I did, negative or positive, right? Yeah, comes out in my kids, and yeah. sometimes you know I'm doing this, and other times I just you know I want to crawl in a hole because I'm thinking, why didn't I catch that when they were right. younger? Mm -hmm. And we're not perfect. We're right. never going to do it perfectly. We've got to just keep trying, keep yeah. doing the best we can. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, we have to put in place that basically what I was saying before, that ability to be able to say no to ourselves when the answer should be no and yes mm -hmm. to ourselves when the answer should be yes because they are watching that and they are 
weighing out whether what I say is valid by what I do. Mm. And it's yeah. just huge. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, back to Stacy. I, I think that uh, both of your input on that is so important. And, you know, if you're struggling with self-control, I would say definitely talk to your navigating motherhood leader or yeah. a friend in the group. But this is something that we need to start working on yeah, we because do. it's going to make a huge difference. And when we fail, we will fail at that. And we will fail in front of our husbands. We will fail in front of our kids. Um, Stacy, what would you say, or how did you, how do you respond after times like the the little yeah the little unusual yeah. um, experience you had i i'm cut to my heart you know i mean it it is uh embarrassing uh it's it's also an opportunity though mm-hmm. an opportunity to teach my kids and to model humility and mm-hmm. um yeah. and show them that we are all in need of Jesus. Mm. I'm not perfect. I don't do things right all the time. I do things wrong a lot of the time mm. and and I need Jesus too. Yeah. And uh, so I get to come back to them uh, after doing business with the Lord first, you know, mm. and, and and apologize to all of them, not just to my son, who was right. really the, the right. probably my, my main target in that moment, you right. know, but everybody who was watching that, my, all my kids, you know, I, I had to and I have to, if that happens again, I have to come back to them and, and own it and yeah. confess it. Mm-hmm. Tell them I did business with the Lord and mm-hmm. he is faithful and just right. to forgive us and cleanse us of our unrighteousness. And, and, and we get to move forward. And, right. and I believe that. I trust that, right. you know, and, and, uh, and I ask them to forgive me. And wow. they are so willing. Kids are so ready yeah. to forgive. Mm-hmm. They just want to, yes, you know, and they, they're ready to move on. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and it's refreshing. And now, now it's done. And we're moving on, yeah. you know, and, and forging ahead and um, and getting back to that place of having a happy heart. And right. I was reading in the Bible just recently about uh, how God had regretted making Saul king mm. when he did not yeah. obey. Yeah. Mm. And I don't want to be making God regret having me be my kid's mom. I want to mm. make choices that obey the Lord in teaching my kids to control themselves yeah. and bless the Lord in that. And, and that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's a high responsibility, but something he, em, he enables us to do. We're yeah. not on our own to do it. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. yeah totally. Yeah, I love that, Stacy. And I would just ask you, I mean, I bet there's somebody out there that wants to do business with the Lord, as you said, but might need a little more unpacking there. Mm -hmm. Uh, What do you mean by that? Let's say somebody realizes that they failed in that area and they haven't, you know, responded in a way that you did, uh, you know, to keep moving forward and make things right. What would you encourage her to do? What do you mean by that business with the Lord? I think it can be hard because I think we're so quick to just identify a result of something that's going on in our heart. And we think we have acknowledged, okay, I messed up there and I, uh, we're just going to move ahead. And, and I think God calls us to a deeper place than that. Mm. We've got to uh-huh. really agree with God and look at our sin the same way God does. And God is really good and faithful about circling us back around if we don't get it right. Mm. You know, he is He is so good. Uh, and it's hard because we think, I, I, I just talked to God about this yesterday. I don't understand why I'm doing it again today or even the next hour, right? You know, right. you have that anger boil. What's the yeah. deal? I just... Right. I know I'm messing up. How can I fix this? And and I think m- being motivated by pleasing the Lord is so critical. It's mm. it can't be I'm going to teach my kids to be self-controlled because I want a better life circumstance or a better yeah. environment it's to funny. live in. I I'm going to do it and I'm going to be obedient to the Lord in this and and I'm going to see my sin in it. And I'm going to talk to God and agree with him about it. And, and I'm going to ask him to forgive me and cleanse me of it. Mm. And, and that's what the scriptures say, you know, and, and like I tell my kids, God gives us guidelines and rules to live by 
to keep us safe and happy. Yeah. And, and it's so, um, I just think it's an, a beautiful gift from him to yeah. do that, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that, awesome. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, thank you for spending a little extra time on that. I know uh, we all... I, sh- I should say, I did want to make note too, that we we stop our sin when we're sorry, mm. right? I mean, yeah. it, you can, and I do say this to my kids a lot when I'm doing one-on-ones with them after they sin. You, I, I teach them, if you're serious, if you really mean that you're sorry, you need to stop your sin. Mm. And I'm going to be looking for you to show me that you're sorry. When we go back out and you go back to playing with your brother and sister or whatever, uh, I'm going to be looking for you to show that you're sorry. And God's doing the same thing with us. He's mm. looking to see if we're sorry. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes that means you got to set up the accountability. You right. got to confess to friends who can help you grow through that, not say to you, oh, I know I did the same thing too. I mean, you, that, you need somebody who's going to challenge right, you and right. bring you back to the depth of what you're doing to right. offend God. Yeah. And wow, this is something that would cause him to regret you, your, your, uh, how you're living out the role that he's entrusted you with. You right. know? That, it's a serious thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's so good. And what a blessing our navigating motherhood groups are, even if they're on Zoom right now, but a place to meet with other women who know the Bible and, you know, know how God feels about these things and will hold our hand in a sense and, you know, help us as we fail to say, you will help you to, you know, work together with God's spirit and overcome that. So thank you. Uh, What about you, Sharon? What would you add regarding? Just a couple of things. I mean, um, Stacy, that was so beautifully said. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're talking about the whole repentance um, issue, which is so amazing because we do have do-overs with God, you know, when we blow it, which we always will, um, hopefully less and less as we go, but nobody's perfect. God is so quick to forgive if Mm -hmm. we are willing to do that. So, I mean, your process of what you do with your kids is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And even in that theory of more is caught than taught, what Mm -hmm. a fantastic thing for your kids to catch, Mm -hmm. right? They're they're watching mom actually go through the process of repentance and forgiveness. And um, it's just so beautiful. Um, And just to add to that, because like I said, I can relate to you so much. I've been through too many times that same scenario. And I think as the years went on, I started to learn that I needed to give myself a time out. Mm-hmm. So it and do it before I opened my mouth, mm-hmm. right? So as soon as I started to feel that anger rise up in me, I would tell the kids, "You go to your room. Mom is going to her room. Mom and God are going to spend some time together. And when I'm done, I will come back and talk to you." Mm-hmm. And it was great. It was that's how we used time out yeah. in my home. We didn't use it as a. Uh, consequence, we used it as a reflection time, a time to think and pray. Yeah. And so I would pray and ask the Lord, please give me that self-control yeah. to um, deal with my kids the way that he would want me to deal mm-hmm. with them uh, in a way that is profitable, that mm-hmm. gets them to the next step in life and doesn't beat them down. Yeah. So... So good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, You know, I would say uh, that it's pretty evident that self-control is critical. It is. And that we need to be exercising it in our life and even taking responsibility when we don't. But, you know, what could you leave our friends with as far as some, you know, practical strategies if they want to begin to teach their kids self-control? How do they actually do this? I mean, what are some practical things they can do? Let's say they've got young kids at home. They're thinking, yes, I want to start right now teaching them self-control. Uh, how do I do that? How would you respond to that, Stacy? Yeah, I mean, I, I do find myself going through cycles, right? I, I'll get lazy. I mean, the kids yeah. seem like they're doing great. Mm-hmm. Like, Got it down, and I'll kind of slack in 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 uh, monitoring them, or just be you know just be more attentive and mindful, and I'll slip away and do my projects while I'm letting them play and not really uh, listening to their exchanges, and um, and then all of a sudden it, it, you you feel the aftermath of that, yeah. and it might be a week, 
two weeks, maybe two hours. I don't know. It just kind of depends yep. on what the dynamics are. But um, but I, it's an opportunity to just press the reset button. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 so bring good. everybody back in. You know, and it's you have the the chat. You're the you're the coach here with these kids, and you're you're coaching them through. Uh, the game of life and you know I'll bring them together and okay you guys mom's been I haven't been doing what I'm supposed to be doing you know God's called me to teach you in ways that are gonna help you grow in your love for him and and I need to be doing a better job at that and uh, so we're we're gonna press that reset button we're gonna start over we're gonna have a fresh slate and and we're gonna start doing things in a way that's pleasing to God okay and we're gonna get back on track basically and uh, and with that it's um, you know there's we're building each other up you know and it, it's it's this it's not pointing the finger and you did this and you did this. it's it, we're coming together and we're gonna we're gonna all put ourselves under what God says because he does want us to be safe and happy and yeah. I I mean, that's, yeah. these are the, the, there's, there's love behind the, the ways we're there called is. to interact with each other and conduct ourselves in life. And, yeah. um, and I think a simple way is just to, to think of the vocabulary we use. You know, if your kid comes up and says, I can't do this, that's not acceptable. In, in areas of self-control, if, if my kid is of an age and ability that they can do something, uh, I expect them to do it and yeah. I correct their language and thinking it. No, you can do it. You're choosing not. And, and it's it just little simple tweaks, yeah. you know, just. That's and, great. Um, but it, it is, it does start with how we think about the circumstances. And, you know, in this shelter in place scenario that we're in right now, it's hard because everything's up close like this. You know, we kind of need to zoom out a little bit, gain some perspective and, um, and, and just regroup. And so I, yeah. I, I love that. And yeah. we have to do that every yeah. now and then. Yeah, yeah that's so good. Mm -hmm. And what better time? Yeah. To yeah. say, let's push the reset this button. Is. We've got the shelter in place. Good time for us to sit down with our kids and just yeah. say, hey, you know, we have failed or we haven't done as God wants us to do regarding self-control. We're going to make some changes yep. and we're going to work together as a team and we're going to get better at doing this. And you yeah. set each other up to, or you set your kids up and you to win, right? Yeah. Not to fail. I mean, yeah, I love I'm not going to go expect that my three-year-old is going to perform the same way in, in areas of self-control that my six-year-old can. Right. I'm going to start at, a, at an appropriate level with my kids and, and be diligent and faithful to keep growing them and stretching them like, like a trainer, you yeah. know? I mean... Yes. Yeah. Like a trainer. That's good. Yep. Building it up. Yep. So yeah. good. Uh, what about you, Sharon? What would you leave us with as some practical ways we can begin to teach um, even young kids yeah, self-control? I mean... I, I think the practicality of all of this has to be in place for us to do it. And I think otherwise this whole topic is overwhelming. Yeah. Um, and I would say the overarching blanket of this is that your kids need a parent in the home. So in other words, your home needs to be a parent-run home, mm -hmm. um, not a child-run home. And so there is, I think, a kind of a philosophy that kids should be able to do and create and be within their home anything that they want. But the reality of that is when we do that, we end up setting them up for failure. And I loved that where, Stacy, you were saying you want them to have victory, to succeed. Yeah. And the only way we can do that is to manage their boundaries so that they are having success within those boundaries. And some of those boundaries start as soon as they are infants. They can be lying on their back and kicking their little legs. Um, they start to roll. They start to crawl. And we talk about doing blanket time where you throw a little blanket on the floor. Okay. Um, and mom, you have to manage this, especially in the beginning. And we have time right now mm -hmm. because of yes. the fact that we're all home, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it takes a little bit of work, but it is so well worth it. And you train your child to stay within the boundaries of the edge of the blanket. Mm -hmm. 
And they begin to understand that for life, that there are boundaries in their life. After they manage the blanket, and, and in fact, one of the things I love about the blanket is you can go anywhere with that. So you can go to a park, you can go to a friend's house. Um, I have seen ladies um, throw blankets down and have meetings. Um, and their kids are great on the blanket with some toys. And so really it doesn't matter what age they are. If they've learned blanket training early, they can do it as long as you want them to or as long as you need them to. Um, I'm a big proponent of play pens. Um, mom, keep their, their world safe. You've got things to do and you've got to get them done in your home. That's part of your self-control, right? Yeah. Um, dishes and, you know, just the, the usual things in the home. And so to be able to put a child in a play, play pen and I hear moms, oh, my child won't stay in the play pen. Right. Yes, they will. You just have to work at it. So they're going to cry. They're going to cry a little bit. So you give them 10 minutes the first day, and then you stretch it a little longer after that. And by about day three, four, you're going to start seeing some improvement. And they are going to become more and more content in that little space. And you've got good toys there for them to play with. Um, the, the incredible thing about them doing this is you are also learning, teaching them to be self-sufficient and independent so that they're not relying on mom to entertain them all day. Yeah. That's one of the biggest problems we have. It keeps us from being the mom and the wife in the home that we should be. So if we are teaching them those boundaries, um, playpen, blanket, and eventually you move them to their own room and do room time. And as they learn to be independent on their own, own self-sufficient in there, and you set them up, for success with just a certain amount of toys, good learning toys, um, you are able to get the things done in your home that you need to get done. Your life becomes more manageable. Um, and I'm not talking about doing this all day long, right. but um, just a couple of times during the day for maybe a 45 minute period or an hour. Yeah. Um, and it is a huge blessing, not only to your child because of what they're learning, but also to you, mom. It's amazing. Wow. So. Yeah, that is so good. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what a great suggestion for our ladies to put into practice, um, just to begin to teach that there are boundaries and limits in life. And yeah. for a short amount of time, so our kids can stay within those boundaries and those limits. That yeah. is fantastic. Well, I've really enjoyed looking at this topic of self-control. I've been trying to exercise self-control and not cough the last five minutes. <laughs> Doing great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> God have mercy. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I love again our verse, Proverbs sixteen thirty two. Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. I mean, we really have the potential to change the direction of our kids' lives. Yeah. If we start now to teach them to be self-controlled. So don't forget to join with your groups in Zoom this week. Uh, if you're watching this video and you're not a part of a Navigating Motherhood Zoom group and you'd like to be involved, just go to navigatingmotherhood.com. There's a little button there where you can request to be a part of a Zoom discussion group and you can meet online with godly women like Stacy and like Sharon who will help you to you know, think through these things. But we thank you so much for watching the video. It's been great to be able to talk about these things. And we will see you next week with our next video.